G'day patrons and welcome again. And in this episode, we are looking in depth at Hong Kong. But Jack, please uh, welcome for, firstly. But um, tell us, uh, tell us how things are in Hong Kong at the moment. Well, I'm still here and still alive. And, uh, <laughs> last man standing. Yeah, last man standing. Uh, look, we've got 50,000 cases a day, have had for a couple of weeks. They're the reported ones. Um, I don't know anybody who's actually got the disease, who's bothered to report it or who wants to report it. And we're right. having, and we're, and we're up past 3,000 deaths now. So we've gone past... Uh, uh, New South Wales and Victoria. Um, I think we've gone from the uh, lowest death rate per capita in the world to uh, getting up towards the top. Yes, in very short space of time. We've been talking about this uh, <coughs> over over really all of our episodes, and and um, and and the particular vulnerabilities Hong Kong's got. We're going to get to that in our sort of uh, in our main news section. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to tell us just exactly how the experts are responding, and uh, how the how the people of Hong Kong are reacting to it all. Um, uh, but first, we want to go to the the uh, major hotspot around the world, and that is uh, Ukraine. Uh, there are a number of uh, 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 issues coming out of it. There's the propaganda war, which uh, which uh, Ukraine has won uh, convincingly. Um, the Russians haven't put up the, the white flag yet, but they have won it convincingly. The ground war seems to have stalled, Jack, and it's called, it must be causing all sorts of problems for Putin. You would think so, wouldn't you? Um, uh, one thing I've noticed is that the Ukrainians have at least claimed to have killed a couple of generals, two or three generals, and... Uh, you wouldn't normally expect generals to be quite that close to the front. Well, yeah, that is an interesting development, and it may well be that Putin has said, listen, you blokes, get amongst it, you know. Yeah. I'm not happy with the way things are progressing. Which is yes, a, the, which is an indication of how unhappy he is, I think, if he's doing that sort of thing. Up you go, up to the front. And, uh, <coughs> um, yes, uh, uh, we had Gerasimov, who was the head of the army, uh, uh, reported dead. I think there's a a, 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 a a lieutenant colonel who's very close to Putin who is reported as dead, and another general uh, whose name just uh, just can't doesn't come to me. Now those are on uh, Ukrainian reports, so I guess we take that with a little bit of scepticism. Um, but yeah, it would seem that it's not going all that well. Um, m- many people expected. This to be over, um, the the invasion stage to be over, and uh, the Russian army triumphant in Kiev, uh, in Kiev, but uh, it's just not happening at the moment. Well, um, I think there are three things that, um, that that Putin expected. Firstly, that he would be able to defeat the Ukrainian army relatively swiftly. Yes. Um, secondly, that um, the Ukrainian people um, would not object in the way that they have. Um, and thirdly, that the rest of the world wouldn't get united against him, that they would bicker amongst themselves and any uh, sanctions, etc., would be fairly feeble. And that's yeah. he's, kind of, he's kind of zero for three out of uh, those expectations. No, <coughs> uh, and the world's actually been very, very good. I mean, when we say the world, Europe's been strong, much stronger than we might have anticipated. I think also the Biden administration's been a lot stronger than uh, uh, we might have anticipated there. There was a moment there not long after the invasion began where Biden uh, obviously had come out of long meetings and it was early in the morning DC time, but he stumbled over his words and and uh, struggled to be coherent and it looked very, very bad. But um, Do you I mean the Putin, bit where he said a little in, a little incursion amongst friends was okay? <laughs> no, I think that was an earlier an earlier statement. There was there was one, <clears throat> as I say, within twenty four hours of the invasion, where he came out looking pretty ragged, uh, and uh, um, you, you, one wondered whether the, the the Biden administration had the strength to uh, to be able to. Uh, uh, stand up to the Russians in the right way. 
there are some uh, they, the Americans are very averse to uh, any form of engagement in terms of uh, an, an air war, uh, any form of control of the skies over Ukraine, and that comes to the point where the Polish were going to ship off uh, <clears throat> some aircraft uh, to uh, Ukraine, and um, basically the Americans said no. That's just happened in the last 24 hours as of the 11th of the 3rd. So it's clear that they're also playing a game that they don't, that they, that they are very averse to any form of escalation. That doesn't help the, the people of uh, Ukraine at all, though, does it? No, no, they're going to send MiGs uh, to uh, yeah. Ukraine via a US base in Germany, and, uh, and the US stopped that. Um, I don't think the, the Biden administration has been terribly good on this, but we can differ about that. Um, they have got Kamala Harris in Poland, which is, you know, I, I don't know what the Ukrainians have deserved to uh, to have her <laughs> um, uh, 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 arguing for them. Um, you're, not a, you're not a fan. It's, it's obvious. It's It's been made fairly obvious. I think they've been fairly strong in, in, in what they've been able to do uh, and basically been able to uh, land sanctions in the right way. Um, and it may may cause. I mean, you know, the, probably the big uh, announcement this week was uh, uh, the US ban on Russian oil imports. Uh, the UK, UK are phasing it out. We're entitled to be a little bit cynical about that, um, but but US have just put a ban in, in place on that. That will cause all sorts of political problems for Biden at home. Uh, the Germans haven't jumped in behind that. I think the Chancellor said that at the moment, Europe's supply of energy for heat generation, mobility, power supply and industry cannot be secured in any other way apart from buying um, energy from Russia. Um, so they, the, the Germans have been very good about aspects of this, but they have locked themselves in um, to a situation where they are absolutely dependent upon um, Russian energy. Yeah, it's often mentioned about, you know, sort of keeping Germans warm. Uh, uh, well, they've got their spring and summer coming, but keeping them warm in their winters. But it's more about industry, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, uh, gas, coal, you know, <coughs> and, and, and big industry requirements. They can, they can probably rug up a little bit for one winter, but um, uh, they've got a lot of factories they want to run and they need reliable base load power for that. Um, unfortunately, Chancellor Merkel, who has come out of all of this situation very, very poorly, in my view, um, uh, um, was dismantling all their reliable baseload power and replacing it with intermittent power. Yes, well, that doesn't, uh, that's not always what industry wants. It's, it's, it's rarely what industry want, wants at the moment, anyway. That's sort of this form of, uh, at this stage of the technological development of renewables. Um, but um, uh, but also the, the the other thing that the Americans have done is, but you know, you wouldn't call it shooting themselves in the foot, but politically Biden will have to encounter the the major issue of rising oil prices uh, around four fifty a gallon at the moment at the pump in the United States. It's not going to go backwards, um, and so that will come. That will come with some some big problems for for, for Biden, particularly well, well, the midterms well, the, looming. The White House has already um, rebranded the petrol or the gas gas, as they call it, price rises, as the Putin price rise, in a kind of fairly pathetic attempt to to put all of the problems at the ha- at, with they have with gasoline prices at the hands of um, uh, Vladimir Putin. Well, you just think the political consequences when someone pays for their juice card or cash uh, at the at the servo uh, it's not going to be bloody Vladimir Putin it's going to be a, a sort of white hot anger directed at government uh, and, uh, and 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 the, and the Biden administration in particular um, the so mid- the, the midterms in November are looking very very ugly indeed yeah you would say so yeah but meanwhile Boris seems to have without doing terribly much I mean Boris there's Boris, you could criticise pretty heavily about sanctions. There are all sorts of uh, uh, oligarchs running around the UK, uh, you know, empty empty palaces around the place, uh, kids at Eton and all that sort of stuff who continue to go there. But Boris seems to have uh, 
Fanny's uh, Churchillian uh, um, uh, what was it, idiom, perhaps, um, uh, in this crisis. Well, the best thing that happened for Boris is that his problems were mm, have, have, have become ancient history. All this stuff about what was happening at the parties at Downing Street seems unimportant all of a sudden, so he can walk past that. And he has been out front arguing for tougher sanctions. Now, whether that whether the, whether he's been following through is something else, but he's looked and sounded like a proper prime minister, um, and that's. You know, that, that means he's pretty safe for the moment, I would have thought. In fact, one of the, I saw this early this morning, one of the um, rebels within the Tory party has publicly withdrawn his letter to the 1922 committee saying this is not the time to, um, uh, to be changing leaders. Yeah, so, so while well, Boris hasn't done all that much and one suspects not quite as much as the Americans. But he does sound domestically. Right. <laughs> I, I, he gets the voice. He does the voice. You reckon he's got the, the old piece at home? He's got the Winston Churchill speeches at home and he might uh, stand in front of the mirror and let rip with a few? 